Mark chapter 9. My sermon title today is A Children's Sermon, A Children's Sermon, and we'll get to that in a moment, but you'll understand it even as we begin. Verse 33 in Mark chapter 9, it's on the board, but if you bring a Bible, always open it and follow along, make sure I'm not leaving out key words or phrases, and uh, keep a good check on the preacher, you should do that. He then came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What was it you disputed among yourselves on the road? I love Jesus' sense of humor. He knew what they disputed on the road. They kept silent, for on the road they had disputed among them who would be the greatest. And he, as he sat down, he called the twelve and said to them, If anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and set him in the midst of them, and when he had taken them in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me, meaning God. Now John answered him, saying, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us. Does that verse say that? Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons. Uh, isn't, isn't that typical? Isn't that typical? If they're not of us, they don't count. I was watching something. I don't even know what the TV show was. You've heard of in, in Alaska, the Inuit, the Inuit, they're Eskimos. We call them Indians. Do you know what the word Inuit means? We are the real people. That's what that word means. They're not the only ones who think that. Lots of us have that tendency. Oh, that was an aside. Oh, teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he does not follow us. <laughs> Jesus said, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't forbid him. For no one who works a miracle in my name can, can soon afterward speak evil of me. He's saying he's, he's on our side. For he who does, is not against us is on our side. For whoever gives you a cup of water in my name, because you belong to Christ, assuredly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. But whoever, and please note we're back to children, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he was thrown into the sea. Father, we bless your name today. Thank you, Lord, for this service. We had a great choir special to open this service up. We sang good songs. Tasha sang a great song. And then we had prayer. Lord, we could have very easily gotten up from this time alone, said amen and amen, and went on our way. And Lord, we would have definitely been in a spirit and attitude of worship. But Lord, now we want to listen and hear what you would say to us through your word and through your servant. Bless me, Lord, with my delivery. Help me, Lord, not to say anything that is not of you. Lord, give direction to the remainder of this service. And for all that you do, we'll be careful to give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to go back to 1 John. Jesus set in the midst of them a child. Uh, I believe the emphasis of this text is simply simplicity. Um, I don't know if it was last Sunday night. I had said I wasn't going to preach a real deep sermon, but as I was looking out at people, I think they thought I was preaching a deep sermon. See, I love, I love to get into the deeper issues. I love to discuss doctrine and kind of look at things that aren't interesting to some people. And I know that, but it's interesting to me, and so I enjoy that. But, but i got to tell you, if we try to do that to Christianity, if every Sunday, if we came in here and we talked about things so deep, so almost philosophical, so mental... But when you walked out and got in your car, if you say, that, that don't matter a hill of beans to what I've got to do this coming week, then I failed. I failed in, in what I believe God would have us do. 
it, it, it doesn't matter how much we know about doctrine. I don't care if, if you could memorize the entire Bible. If you can't apply it to the lives of people, then, then you're not doing them any good. There's an old saying that says people don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. We, we've got to make Christianity something that's real in our lives so that when other people see it, they go, I need what you've got. It's, it's got to be attractive. And I don't mean that in an alluring way. I mean simply it has to matter. And so I believe speaking in the terms of children is what Jesus did because he kept it simple. He wanted people to get it, not make it so hard that they couldn't get it. Well, let me give you point number one, and then we're going to read some text here. We are God's children. We are God's children. I want to tell you, though, that's not automatic. Some of you have heard people like on TV say, hey, we're all God's children. That's absolutely not true. That's, that's not biblical. You have to be adopted in. We are, by nature, by nature, we are children of wrath. That's what the Bible says. You weren't born a child of God. You were born a sinner. You're not by nature God's child. You've got to be adopted by God into his family. So we become God's children. We don't start that way. 1 John 3, 1, and 1 through 3. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God. Now we are. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed... We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he, meaning Jesus, is pure. We are ch God's children. That's an easy point to make. It clearly says that we should be called children of God. But I want to focus just for a moment on verses 2 and 3. It says, it has not all been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. There has to be a revelation. The, the, the next book, the book that John wrote, was called the Revelation, not 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and then there's Jude, but the books that John wrote. He writes about the revelation, the revealing. The idea of simple here is that we tend to make it too hard. We sing a song about building steeples out of stone. We, we make it too hard. We, we want to apply too many things that, that aren't always to the point, especially when it comes to salvation. Now, I'm, I'm going to talk about this some more later. But we spend too much time trying to figure it out instead of just simply taking it by faith. We, we want to figure it out. Our Sunday school lesson this morning came from Isaiah 55 and in Isaiah 55, it says that God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. If you and I are going to figure God out, we are never going to get anything done because you and I are not capable of fully understanding God. We need His revelation for us to know anything at all. Let, let me give you Matthew 5, 8. We're, we're down to verse 3 now. It says, everyone who has this hope purifies himself. Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. You remember, I think it was last week. It could have been the week before now. It was last Sunday. I talked about the term perfection, and I said that we believe in perfect love. We, we believe in heart holiness. We, we believe that God does a work in our heart of purifying us. Um, yeah, I won't, I'm not going to stab. I was going to stab at one in the dark. But I, I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to get it. Uh, but it's, it's Peter in the book of Acts. He's talking and he's explaining to them that, that they had gone down to Samaria or up to Samaria. And it says, and we know that the Holy Spirit fell on them as he did on us because he purified their hearts by faith. You see, that, that's what we need. We need heart purity. And then that flows out from us. Many preachers would probably tell you that Matthew 5, 8 says that if we live a pure life, we'll see Jesus in the end. I don't think that's what John is saying. I think John is saying, 